principle theory, stochastic processes, and Wright's space theory. He has supervised around nine MSc and nine PhD students. He was the head of the School of Mathematics at WITS for seven years, and he is currently acting director of the COE Mass. Please join me in welcoming Professor Bruce Watson. Good morning. Um, as was introduced, I'm Bruce Watson. I took over as director of the COE somewhere around late November, early December last year. Um, I had been affiliated with the center for many years. I was one of the original node leaders 10 years ago, because as you can see, this is also our 10 year birthday of the center of excellence. So. The center was set up um, as we said, 10 years ago, in response to a study of the state of mathematics in South Africa. This was commissioned, it was a study looking at all aspects of mathematics in the South African framework, and that was completed in 2008. It was submitted to the government, to parliament, and our vice chancellor then was Luisa Nonkla, who's sitting in the third row. Um, and Luiso was passionate. He is a mathematician, and that's, as you all know, he's an algebraist. Um, and he was passionate about South African mathematics, as he is now. He is still a passionate mover in the whole framework of South African mathematics. He will be a later speaker today. Um, and he lobbied for Bits to be a host of the Center of Excellence and we were successful. Since then, it has um, funded around 230 postgraduate students, 50 postdocs, and funded over 100 work conferences and workshops. And the question is, why, why is the COE mass important to you? Why is it important to the government? Why is it what does it mean for any of us? So, as um, Casey Sparks mentioned, we are funded um, almost exclusively by the government. That's not entirely true, we will. Um, there is co-funding from Wits University as well that goes into it, and um, we attempt to leverage funds via various agreements, collaborative agreements, and that is one of the initiatives that the government hopes we follow, is to use their funding to increase the funding pool for mathematics. Not just use the money they've given, but use that to get more money. So, and this money is run through the Department of Science and Innovation and through as administered by the NRF. Okay, well, this morning started with you meeting the manageress of the center, um, Ms. Casey Sparks. She is also, we have an almost entirely new team managing COE Mass as of late last year. Um, we co-opted um, Ms. Sparks from NEPTTP, that's the um, high performance computing and education in computer science and technology sector um, to assist us. She is an extremely experienced administrator. And if you've seen bobbing around here somewhere is, wave your hand, <laughs> you can come to the front. Um, <laughs> Uh, is Diane Vallejo. Vallejo. Um, I tried hard. <laughs> um, it's a Polish surname. Um, and she is our, Diane is our events manager. She 
people. Diane coordinates all manner of our outreach programs, communications, um, and things like that. Part of the heart of the communication with the center. We have two other staff members, Samaya Khan, who is the research administrator, and when you send an email to COE Mass, the first person it hits is Samaya Khan. Samaya will determine where that email goes often, but all of the team sees the email. So if Samaya is otherwise occupied, other people in the team will attend to the email, and we have our financial administrator, Norma. Samaya and Norma are not here, they are managing the office back in Johannesburg. So even if you send materials to them now, they will assist. But that is not what COE Mass is. COE Mass is not a pile of money. COE Mass is not the five of us funding. We have some subsidiary nodes. These are societies, professional societies and academic societies. You probably recognize some of them. There's the Institute for Certified and Chartered Statisticians, the Statistical South African Stats Association, SAMS, the South African Maths Association, the South African uh, Maths Mathematics Foundation, and the Southern African uh, Mathematical Sciences Association. Each of these organizations has very different representation of the community of mathematics professionals. Um, for instance, SAMF, I think, has around 30,000 members. Am I correct? It's an enormous organization, or is that a MISA? Okay. Okay. But the, the, there are amazing differences in the sizes of these organizations. Um, the maths teachers community is, is a vast community when we compare it to the academic mathematicians of South Africa. Um, yet, the academic mathematicians of South Africa have a duty, and that is to go back to the educators at schools and try and direct them and help them, assist them, make the whole system better. Our current focus areas are listed here. It's not entirely accurate because um, the last item there actually represents two focus areas. Um, the statisticians have some finer divisions within their statistics framework, which I haven't um, um, reflected quite accurately on the slide, but this represents the frame, the landscape of South African mathematics as seen by us and largely as seen by DSI, that's the government, and NRF. We have attempted to make sure that if you are an active mathematician in South Africa, you have a place within our framework. Notable in there is there are implicit connections with industry, with education, and everything from pure mathematics through to highly applied. Um, One of the key objectives of the COE Mass is, believe it or not, not funding. That is a facilitating part of the COE Mass. That's what should be helping us. But we have other objectives. The first of those is to create communication among mathematicians, especially in the South African mathematics community. Create expanding knowledge of mathematics and mathematical sciences in South Africa. That's academic mathematicians, students, teachers, 
and school kids. So it is to grow mathematics in South Africa. We have funding to make those happen, to bring interested parties together so that they can work together, learn from each other, and build a community of mathematicians, not just work in tiny silos, each person working on their own pet problem. And it is to reach out as far and deeply into the communities where there is need. And this need does not mean you have to be poor. It doesn't mean you have to be wealthy. If, you're, if you are mathematically deprived, there is a problem. So we attempt to reach out into the whole community to promote mathematics and to promote excellence. So, one of the, it's important to realize if you're applying for funding, what we actually fund. So, the first is, and a lot of our money goes into seed funding for local conferences and workshops. Why do we fund those? Because they bring people together. They benefit a lot of people. When you bring a workshop together, a whole group of people, a whole community benefits from the funding. The community benefits from working together. They benefit from their plenary speakers. So the payoff of funding a conference or a workshop is enormous to the community. We fund participation in local conferences for graduate students and early career academics. And this is managed through the conference organizers. So when conference organizers apply for funding for their conference or workshop, they need to put in a budget to bring in graduate students and early career academics. There are some other funding agencies at the moment that help with early career academics. Um, the NGA, the National Graduate Academy, um, through Luiso, which he is passionate about. Um, so that assists, and we are working on a collaborative agreement as to funding of early career academics and graduates, graduate students. We also fund the bringing together of small groups of academics to work together, to conclude research, to build research. We fund mathematics outreach to school kids. Um, this is one of the items that the government is extremely passionate about. These last two items, the South Africa has an enormous need for outreach to school kids to make them aware of how important mathematics is. Not just that our mathematics is there, but this is part of modern life. If you want to succeed in modern life, you have to be mathematically literate. You have to be capable. You have to engage with mathematics. And this comes down to who their educators are, the school teachers, the math school teachers. Again, there is an enormous need of intervention by academics who are specialists in mathematics to communicate and direct and lead school teachers, mathematics school teachers, to improve, to improve what they do, how interesting what they do is, so that school kids engage and grow and love mathematics. And amongst other things, South Africa is not a homogeneous society. We have the big cities where there are immense resources. We have more rural parts of the country where there are almost no resources. And if we go back to the if one looked carefully at the list of institutions which we support and are involved with, many of those are rural. They have poor resources. For instance, if you look at the university where I work, every single academic in our, in our department, maths department, has a PhD. They, almost every one of them is actively involved in research. But there are institutions in this country where none of the 
lecturers have PhDs, and none of them are involved in research. So one must understand the government and COE are trying hard to get those institutions to interact with the, the institutions that have an enormous benefit. There has to be some giving and taking. There has to be sharing. There has to be outreach from the, the institutions that have immense resources to the ones that don't. And welcoming the ones that don't to come and benefit from the institutions that have immense resources. And the COE provides funds to assist with that. So if researchers and people from institutions that do not have the benefits need to want to come and work in one of the other institutions to learn for, to come and have a workshop there or a time out there, the COE will attempt to assist you. And lastly, the more people who will benefit from an initiative, the more likely we are to fund it. Our constraints, well, as with everything, we have limited funds. We, we don't have an infinite pot of gold. It's, uh, we wish we did. But, and when one looks at the, the ask on money that we receive, it way exceeds what we have by multiples, it's not. So we obviously look at the applications we get, we vet them very carefully, we go through it line by line and we see whether there are critical things that we can fund to help you make your research better. Obviously, we can't necessarily fund your whole research program. We're not going to give one group of researchers an enormous amount of money and deprive everyone else. But we look for a useful item that will be, that we can glean from your application to be of benefit to you, to make your research better, your group's research better. We rarely fund an initiative that will only benefit one person. Um, there has to be an exceptional case why that person will benefit and what they will take back to their community if we do fund them. And our vision, and this is a vision that's of DSI, COE, and I think largely of the maths community in South Africa, and that is to have all our higher education institutions functioning well in the area of mathematics and statistics. Having all the academics in South Africa with in math sciences and statistical sciences, having the opportunity to do research and be research active. All the schools in South Africa having well-qualified maths teachers. That is not the case at the moment. We want South African school kids and undergraduates and postgraduates to love mathematics, to want to be involved in it, to be the future. <laughs> Mathematically illiterate. It is critical. And everyone should have the opportunity to succeed mathematically. So, where are we in this? The COE, as I said, is 10 years old. And that has implications in the terms of government funding um, processes. We've been granted a two-year extension to try and live up to what I have shown in these slides. We've done quite a lot of it. But we need to do more of it. We need to expand our reach far beyond what we have done. We have a possible three years extension beyond the two years if we can show that we are living up to everything that we have shown there. We need to show that there is impact on the South African mathematical sciences community from our funding, that it is paying off to South Africa. And we need to bring together 
everyone from the mathematical and statistical sciences community to work together to build community. That's not just academic mathematicians and statisticians. A large part of this, the mathematically literate part of South African community, people who have mathematics degrees, statistics degrees, who are working in industry, commerce, we have been asked to bring those people together, to bring them into our community, to form a strong mathematics professional base, and so that we can be seen as a community. And that leads us to where this will hopefully lead. And that is mathematical excellence in research, in the society, to create a thinking and reasoning society that is ready for the modern world. We cannot unless we are strong in the mathematical sciences. Everything in modern life is based on the mathematical sciences. Every piece of modern daily life. Thank you. Um, she is one, she is a B-rated mathematician, in the, an NRF-B-rated uh, mathematician in South Africa, and she spe specializes in classical and semi-classical orthogonal polynomials, asymptotic analysis, and special functions. She currently serves um, as the chairperson of the COE Mass Steering Committee. Um, she is based at the School of Economics and Financial Sciences in, in the Department of Decision Making at UNISA. She is also the Executive Director of the South African Mathematics Foundation, SAMF, and pa a past president of the South African Mathematics Society, SAMS. And she has recently joined the Council of the African Institute of Mathematical Sciences. Please join me in welcoming Professor Kirsten Jordan. All right, good morning. Um, I'd like to begin by, first of all, thanking Ames for helping me to get here um, and for the Center of Excellence for giving me this opportunity to speak. I, uh, all right. Okay. So, as you heard in the introduction, I wear a few different hats. I think I'm just going to lower this. Is it better like this? So you can see my face. Um, and I very proudly wear the hat as chairperson of the um, Center of Excellence for Maths and Statistical Sciences. I joined the steering committee when I was president of the South African Maths Society. And that was around 2016. So that's... Uh, quite a while ago, but then I wasn't on the steering committee all the time. I left and then I was invited back. Um, but so I have been involved for a longer time and, and seen the growth of the Center of Excellence and uh, the, the challenges also that they deal with in, in um, several ways. So in terms of... Uh, some of what Bruce was touching on in his last slides, uh, the way forward for the Center of Excellence, you saw that there's two years and five years and possibly five years and, and some uncertainty. And that uncertainty has been um, going a little bit back already because there's been changes in the office as a result of uh, uncertainty with people not knowing whether they would have work beyond some time last year. Um, and unfortunately, I am speaking a little bit on behalf of a government official now for the next session. You might have noticed in the program that there was a change. So the um, 
National Research Foundation who funds the Center of Excellence has representation on the steering committee. And uh, Dr. Nathan Sassman was going to speak here today, but unfortunately he couldn't be here. Um, and I'm going to try and tell you based on documents from the National Research Foundation what he would have hopefully told you. But um, the uncertainty still is there. So what the National Research Foundation has done, uh, they released in 2022 a framework document, and I have to thank Luisa for making me aware of this document. Prof. Nongsa, thank you very much. Um, which spells out a little bit how the uh, National Research Foundation, I'm going to call it NRF from now, it falls under the Departments of Science and Innovation, um, how they view the mathematical sciences or actually the, the research landscape in South Africa and how they fund it. So I'm taking the lens out a little bit and going broader and then I'll zone back in. Um, so Bruce explained what a center of excellence is, but there are other funding instruments that the NRF uses, and these were all introduced at around the same time. So there's the South African Research Chairs Initiative, and then the center of excellence, and then there are national institutes for research, development, and innovation, of which currently there actually only is one. Um, but it looks like they want to move to some more of those. So let me spell that out a little bit. Can you hear me properly? Is everything fine? I'm just worried when I turn. Okay. So, hmm. Okay. So the COE, um, Maths and Statistical Sciences Mandate, Bruce explained. But the Centers of Excellence were launched in 2004 by, um, in the National Science and Innovation Landscape. And there are 14 in total that have been supported under this instrument for various disciplines. Um, they have a mandate of generating new knowledge, uh, developing human capacity, and forging meaningful local and international collaborations thus uh, achieving a high status in the research communities. And the basic idea was to take something that well, was already strong and strengthen it even more, hence the name Centers of Excellence. So the Centers of Excellence, according to this framework and, and evaluations done by the NRF, have begun to establish significant research platforms in South Africa in their respective disciplines. Uh, and incorporating networks of researchers as well as other partners and um, also institu inst inter-institutional linkages of various kinds and various levels of formalization. These centers though, by the, according to the department itself, are modest by international standards and at best can be regarded as the genesis of larger and more capacitated research development institutions in future. Um, in several cases, there is expressly on the part of the stakeholders aspirations to scale up the capacities of the centers of excellence with a view to achieving the critical mass that is necessary to compete successfully on a global stage and to deliver meaningful societal and economic impact. Um, locally as well. So you saw from Bruce's presentation, I think quite clearly, what the aspirations of our center of excellence is. Now, but they're not the only player in the field in mathematical and statistical sciences in the country. So, oh, I already said that. Which way should I point it? You did this seamlessly, Bruce. <laughs> this side, all right. Yeah, there we go. So, SACHI for short stands for the South African Research Chairs Initiative. This was launched in 2006 to primarily address concerns about the brain drain in South Africa. 
and ensuring that South Africa maintains and grows its research competitiveness. Um, the government has awarded over 250 chairs uh, to higher education institutions and also to national research facilities to date. Um, for mathematics, I'm, uh, uh, Jacek Banasiak is sitting here. He holds a chair in mathematical biology. Is that the formal name? <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> and there are other, there's a other similar chair at University of Stellenbosch, and there are several chairs in mathematics education to address issues of numeracy uh, um, at school. Um, and actually, one of the problems is that we, I don't know exactly what other chairs there might be in mathematics. So this is one of the things that the framework document addressed, that we weren't working, these systems were not, uh, these two funded instruments were not working together optimally necessarily. I don't know, Bruce, maybe you know better what all the research chairs are in mathematics, but we haven't been really collaborating with them closely. Okay. Okay. So the choice of research chairs ties in very much with some of the aims that you'll see in the framework document. So what Jacek was saying for those that couldn't hear, here, there actually isn't a research chair in mathematics. It's more in um, mathematics that can be applied to biology and to um, astrophysics, so more theoretical physics, that kind of thing. Um, However, the evaluation from the uh, government report is that the SARTI chairs have generally contributed positively to South Africa's higher education, science, technology, and innovation institutional landscape by strengthening the research base and improving gender representation, producing knowledge, and training postgraduate students. And I have been very aware of the work done by Prof. Banaziak's chair, and I can attest that that has happened but on a small scale at an institution. Um, many of the research chairs have tended to operate within their host institutions with very limited interfaces with other research chairs in the country. Um, and to address this, uh, the uh, communities of practice were introduced by the um, government, and, but I don't think that mathematical sciences did start working on a community of practice. <clears throat> However, so the communities of practice was just four communities of centers of excellence and research chairs to start working together in a bigger grouping. So lessons learned by government on the uh, implementation of the SARTI and COE programs. Okay. So there were some positive outcomes as they summarized the majority of the work conducted by the COEs and SARTI instruments is aligned with social and economic development um, priorities of the country. This is a critical uh, finding so in view of the 2019 white paper on science, technology, and innovation, uh, which has its implementation in what's called the decadal plan, which is from 2020 to 2030, if I'm right. Um, Right, and you'll see right through this the focus on science that can be useful to society. And our challenge is to position ourselves correctly within that because we can be useful to society and we are, but um, the direct usefulness is not as easily obvious in all areas of mathematics and statistics. But the Center of Excellence together have, we're supposed to leverage funding, we have done that, and uh, in total, the 14 centers over the time period since 2004 have leveraged uh, 2 billion rand. Um, the SARCHI uh, initiative and the COEs have also developed human capacity because an impressive number of graduates and postdoctoral fellows funded through these instruments gained invaluable experience. They have been 
transformative in the terms of uh, gender transformation and racial representation as well. Um, and most importantly to me, the long-term funding commitments under these instruments allowed the researchers to the freedom to carry out long-term research programs and plans, work across disciplinary boundaries, and pursue research problems with some depth, not focus just on short-term outputs. Um, so that's all very positive. So what, according to government, were the gaps and the shortcomings of these um, funded programs? So first of all, relatively few SARCHIs and COEs appear to have been in knowledge production relationships with, with business, civil society, government agencies, or industry. So this is, according to government, a serious disconnect, and it's even lamented in the white paper on STI as perpetuating the fragmentation and incoherence in our national system. The work of the SARCHI chairs and the COEs has led to a very limited number of innovations that qualified for exploitation through spin-off companies, patenting, or li licensing. And guilty as charged, right? Our COE has not done that really. Right, right Bruce? I'm not forgetting something. The strategic interface between the two instruments, so SARGITES and uh, COEs, was not clearly articulated, and this issue uh, and others that became more prominent towards the final stages of the earlier funding contracts is also an unclear endgame strategy for both funding instruments. So where do they lead to? The COEs in particular were established with the purpose of seeding capabilities in key disciplines for the con economy and consolidating these until they acquire critical mass that can deliver impacts. Um, and I think, in my humble opinion, our COE is there. Um, so we did gain critical mass, and I'll explain that in more detail soon. And uh, Bruce so showed some of this. But another gap or shortcoming, and this one is really important in the South African context, is that instead of closing the gap between um, historically advantaged and historically disadvantaged institutions, um, the gap has been widening. Um, this widening divide must be addressed. Um, according to government and also according to, I think, most of our opinion, in the next iteration of um, instruments, and it must be done urgently. And so this is what we have to look at. If we think of the road forward, what, what we need to address. So some key considerations. Bruce, I think you were taller. That's the trick. I just have to lift my arm. Right, the distribution of Saatchi chairs, just the, to talk about this widening gap. Um, so this is all the universities that did get funding. Now, um, for those of you that are not South African, we have uh, historically advantaged universities which operated in the apartheid era as serving white uh, students. And then we have ones that were meant to serve other groups of students. And this is what we need to address, that there is equality amongst all of them. There are 26 higher education institutions in South Africa, of which um, those five definitely were historically advantaged. And you, as you can see, they still <coughs> serve, uh, get, they got the largest bulk of the research chairs. I unfortunately don't have a similar diagram for the centers of excellence, but I think it will look similar, if not worse. Um, the only university that's done quite well, that's historically disadvantaged, is one quite close to us, the University of Western Cape. And um, they got 18 uh, research chairs. And then UJ is still, uh, University of Johannesburg was historically advantaged. Um, Limpopo University has done quite, what is LU? So 
sorry. Yeah, no, that's you, Jay. I could, can't you read <laughs> from this angle. RU is Rhodes University, also historically advantaged, and then TUT is uh, uh, University of Technology in Pretoria. Um, it used to be Technicon Pretoria. So literally, apart from UWC, all the way up to, I would say, somewhere here, all historically advantaged universities, even University of the Free sta sta State, C yeah. All right, so the line can be drawn somewhere here. UNISA was very active. It actually um, is historically advantaged. It was one of the first universities in South Africa. But then as we go down here, University of Fort Hare in the Transkei region, um, definitely not historically advantaged. University of Limpopo, neither. Um, Cape University of Technology, I think, here, et cetera. So, so you see the gap. Clearly, it's still there. Um, right, so the question will be how to address that, because one really needs to strengthen these universities and the ones that are not even on this list going forward. And as a community, we've done quite a lot to try and do that, but we still have to do a lot more. Um, so the way forward, key considerations for the way forward is that we have to work within government plans and frameworks and policies. So the new decadal plan for science and innovation presents an opportunity for government to reconfigure the uh, institutions in research and development and to focus on the priorities and to redirect their investments. And a key consideration in supporting the scaling up of entities like the centers of excellence in a given discipline, the ability to address the most pr challenging problems facing the country is paramount. Then the ability to address fragmentation and in in incoherence in the system is also something that is looked at. The capacity to leverage additional resources will be a factor in government's decisions. Um, and they will look at uh, funding instruments that can um, uh, address the priorities of concern in the decadal plan. So they want to optimize the capacities of research chairs and centers of excellence um, if their resources are concentrated on areas that are most likely to deliver the greatest impact for the country in the shortest period possible. So how do we do that? Right. So this is governance plan still that I'm talking about. So for the research chair in initiative, they will do an analysis to establish the extent of the alignment of a research chair um, between the focus area of the chair and the decadal plan priorities. Those research chairs that are not identified for further investment should be phased out when the applicable contracts come to an end. Any new research chairs to be established must be aligned with the new priorities in the white paper and the decadal plan. Future chairs shall also be chosen to address the gaps and shortcomings discussed above, as well as reduce the widening marginalization of the historically disadvantaged institutions. Um, and also, they must be chosen to address or improve the demographic profile of research chairs to bring them in line with the transformation targets of the um, departments of science and innovation. For the COEs, uh, they, they have already started two years ago a process to identify COEs whose contracts will be extended based on the principles and priorities outlined in this document. So our COE got a two-year extension with a possibility of another three years after that while they're completing this evaluation. Um, and in this time, they will be uh, developing criteria and guidelines to inform decisions regarding the COEs and the other tenta 
entities that qualify to be sco scaled up into national institutes. Um, they call them NIRDIS, so that stands for National Institute for Research and Development. Um, the centers of excellence whose contracts uh, have not been earmarked for extended funding shall be phased out uh, by allowing the contracts to run their course and then the NRF will just simply activate the necessarily closing out processes in accordance with approved procedures and policies. So very recently we were in the position where we really did not know whether we'd even get the two-year extensions, so hence we lost a lot of staff that, that did not know whether they'd be salaried beyond the end of last year. And that's it's, it's very unfortunate when stuff happens like that, but you know, one copes and manages and we got excellent new staff to replace them and we're still going strong and we're still hoping to build ourselves into a national institute. So let me explain to you what government means by National Institutes for Research, Development and Innovation. Um, and as I said to you, there already is one like this. It's known as the National Institute for Theoretical and Computational Sciences. And one option for the future of mathematical sciences to form is to form a part of that. In a certain way, we already do form part of it, this very close collaboration between the Center of Excellence and, uh, and other groupings in the mathematical sciences landscape and the existing um, NERDI, if I can call it that. But let me just explain, so in general, what government aims with them is that they will play a pivotal role in um, promoting and advancing uh, multi and transdisciplinary research. They will promote research collaborations to enhance the effectiveness and impact of programs. They will formulate research ag agendas that address developmental challenges in the country, so societal impact is very, very important. And they will create possibilities to sh share research infrastructure and knowledge. So how do they define a national institute? It will be a decentralized research facility uh, according to their framework. The one that exists is not decentralized. It's situated at the University of Stellenbosch. Or Stellenbosch University. Right, I'm, I always get that one wrong. Um, so it will have appropriate national and international collaborations that can demonstrate research excellence within the national and international communities over time. It will be a magnet of critical mass um, of high-end researchers distinguished by their track record in research outputs and impacts and good NRF ratings or citation profiles. Um, it will be a vibrant hub for training and development of emerging and the next generation of researchers, a repository of some of the best research infrastructure in the relevant field, a point of reference for government in the formulation of policy, and have a demonstrable track record of success in leveraging diverse funding streams to be able to sustain themselves in the long term. So how does government see the articulation of Saatchi chairs, um, centers of excellence, communities of practice, and the national research institutes? So the idea is that they should have been working together already as a community of practice. We'll have to very quickly get there. And then if they address enough of the imperatives to government impacting society and can show to do that, then they can be chosen to be upscaled into a National Research Institute. Now, what I haven't spoken about yet is the scale of these institutes. So if you look at a Saatchi chair, typically it's two to five researchers and their students. Um, and one to three million rand a year. If you come from Europe, please divide by 20. Um, 
And then the center of excellences are typically five to 15 researchers and five to 10 million rand a year. And a national institute is more than 100 researchers with around 100 million a year. So you can see, in order to fund this, government does have to consolidate some of this to fund these much bigger institutes. Now, our center of excellence um, has been operating at the funding level of a center of excellence with approximately 10 million a year since 2020, but we have been servicing approximately two, well, Bruce said 230. So we're operating at that level in terms of who is serviced. Um, and that's why Bruce was saying there's severe funding constraints if you do apply for funding, but they've really done their best with the limited funds to date. And luckily, mathematics is, and statistics is not very expensive to fund because we don't need huge laboratories. We need to collaborate and talk to each other and have forums to do that, and time and space to think. Um, so just to put this into context as well, I was talking to a lady uh, from Germany um, who is involved with one of the centers at uh, Heidelberg University. What, what, what is she here? I don't see her. Anyway, they, they at Heidelberg University have something like a center of excellence. It's, it's called similar. And it was, uh, so they've also gone through a process of government deciding how they're going to fund things. And the comparison is that it's, it's very localized at the university, about 60 researchers, uh, but the order of funding is this. And in the country, there's 59 that they're putting calls out for. So it's a developed country. They can go a lot bigger than us. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that. But uh, I'm just trying to give you the context. So we're looking at only 14 of these at 10 million, 5 to 10 million at the moment. That's what we have. And then 250 of these. So you see why they're saying there's fragmentation. Because a lot of the money, 250 million plus, is going into the in, uh, very localized with very small groups of researchers. And now they want to grow it to there. So that's how I see it. And we don't, what was the number of how many in uh, NIDIS they plan? I have it somewhere. I forgot now. But it's less than 14, right? Because it's, uh, so they have to consolidate this to fund that. So it's going to be less than 14. So it is estimated that a typical NIDI would require funding commitment at a high level of support for at least 20 years. And the introduction will be gradual and highly selective. Um, so the existing funding instruments will have to be creatively consolidated and refocused. Um, now I've really lost my connectivity. Okay. So they will consolidate into a few of those. You can maybe count the dots. That will give you an idea how many they're looking at. Um, and it will be over time because they first have to stop the funding of all the others so that they consolidate the funding into some of them. Uh, but the funding pool is, is, is not huge. And the question that I'm going to talk about next, and uh, we're going to first take a break, don't fret, is how do we try and position ourselves to, to um, actually utilize what government wants to do with not knowing whether they will fund us or not. But irrespective of that, we have to keep going. And whether we get external funding or utilize the funding that's already in the National Institute of Theoretical and Computational Sciences and fall under them, it doesn't matter. What I want to take you in the next session, and it will be very constructive based on a 15-year-old review of the mathematical sciences in 2008 and what they recommended. Oh, how did I end up? Okay. We basically, in the words of my good friend Jacek Banaziak, have to write our own science fiction story. But, but why science fiction? I don't mean it's a fairy tale or a dream. It's going to be 
what we plan to do going forward and work actively as a community towards getting there. So I don't know, should I just give a five minute break and then see whether anybody comes back? Or should I continue? Keep going. Okay, sorry, if you want to have a break, just quickly get up and... <laughs> um, so the question is, working towards a National Center for the Maths and Statistical Sciences, what will it look like? What entities will form part of it? What issues will it solve? How do we get there and how do we fund it? So this is not just my own ideas. This is taking what was proposed in the Review of Mathematical Sciences Research at South African Higher Education Institutions by an international review panel uh, which met in South Africa from the 10th to the 19th of November in 2008. The final report was made available on the 18th of December 2008. Um, the panel was constituted to include four mathematical sciences, uh, scientists from abroad, including one from Africa, two South African mathematical scientists, and one other South African scientist from an associated discipline. And reading that report now, 15 and a half years on, I really encourage you to do that. I think it is available on the SAMS website. I know it's available on the SAMF, the Maths Foundation website, it's eye-opening. About a week and a half ago, we had a workshop in uh, Gauteng of, of some of the leaders in the ma uh, from various entities of the mathematical and statistical sciences landscape, representatives from the Learned Society, from government, from industry. And if you listen to what they tell you about what the problems currently are, um, you might as well write the report of that, taking it from this 2008 review. It's the same conclusions that we are, that they reach, and the same issues that we are still struggling with in 2024. However, in 2008, there wasn't a center of excellence yet, and there were not research chairs in mathematical sciences. So the landscape has changed. Um, and we have to take that into consideration when we look at how we go forward from here because we have proceeded, but we haven't had the impact yet that we need to have. So the main recommendation of this 2008 review was they recommended the establishment of a national center of mathematical science to serve all South African universities. And they proceeded in the report to describe this national center in three different ways. They explained how um, short-term and medium-term goals, then they explained the structure and how it would operate, and then they laid out a plan going from 2009 for the next, I think it was eight years, how we get there. And the idea of this center was to achieve capacity development, interconnectivity, strengthening the foundations, and uh, improving the image of mathematics, and strengthening statistics, which at that stage was in a crisis, and in a certain sense still is, although there have been very good interventions. So such an institute would have the capacity to host focused programs in the mathematical sciences, provide opportunities for academic staff and student connectivity and development, and also allow cross-fertilization and cooperation between mathematics, mathematics education, industry, and research institutions in related disciplines. The center would need to be independent of any particular university, this was their report, but would exist to serve them all, which is what the Center of Excellence is already doing. It would draw expertise from the universities in South Africa as well as from abroad, and the center would focus on capacity development and high quality research. So what will it look like? I'll look at it in three ways. Uh, the proposal was that there would be a scientific director either from statistics or mathematics, and an associate director 
from either mathematics or statistics. Presumably, I think the idea was that if that's a mathematician, this would be a statistician. The development director would look at development issues and popularizing mathematics, and their proposal was that that would be the director of the uh, mathematics foundation. Uh, so it would be either a mathematician or a mathematics education specialist, but somebody with a maths or stats background. And then uh, there would be two administrative staff and an IT support person. Each university or node appoints existing staff member as a liaison officer. It's already in place. It's maybe not just covering all 26 universities yet, but a large part of them. And then there would be a board of directors. So this was the, f uh, the governance structure envisaged. So this is very easily translated from what we already have now, 15 years on. We can do this tomorrow. Bruce, as the director of the COE, can be the scientific director for mathematics. We need an associate director, um, which could be whoever is currently in charge of the scientific and steering committee of the National Graduate Academy, because that structure already exists. This could be the part-time director appointed for uh, the Maths Foundation, which currently is me, but it's only, <laughs> only going to be me until June, so don't worry, I'm not looking for a job for myself. Um, then the administrative staff is already there, and there also is staff uh, already appointed in the South African Maths Foundation that is being paid by uh, industry funds, not government funds. And this is in place, and there is a steering committee, but one can look at how one restructures that. So in terms of the physical look, Bruce, I'm too short. Okay. So <coughs> the physical structure was something like 10 academic offices. This is what was the proposal was. Five administrative offices, three seminar rooms. They actually said three to five. I'm just being humble. And uh, 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 no, they said three to four. And a medium-sized lecture theater and a library. Um, and also they proposed residences. Now, if you look at that, uh, what is it reminding you of? Andre? Ames, <laughs> right. So that's, that is exactly, it's, this is what Ames has established, right? Um, Ames has established it with um, government funding partly from the National Skills Development Fund, but mostly from international funding. But AIMS is a scope, it's not just AIMS South Africa, it's various other entities. And AIMS has been extremely successful in getting international recognition and um, in establishing themselves locally. But their main focus is uh, training of master's level students and then they also have a research arm so the gap that I see in terms of aims and what the National Institute should be from the South African perspective is tending to the whole pipeline. Um, so that's why I am talking about a South African National Institute as opposed to aims. But it's similar to what they've done here. Anyway. The need for a library is very simple. There are universities in South Africa that do not have adequate funding to give access to all e-journals, etc. So, uh, and there are some that do have too, too many. I mean, I have my overseas collaborators actually contacting me to give them access to papers that they're looking for in specifically physics that my university gives that their university in the UK doesn't. But you see, each university is paying for that individually, and not all of them are able to pay as well and get all the access that they can. So if you have a national library where there's one subscription to everything that mathematicians and statisticians lead, well, that's avoiding fragmentation. The universities can still give their access, but we can make sure that everybody has access to everything that they need by having it nationally coordinated. 
So this is open for debate. It's just what the review um, proposed. So what will it look like in terms of what it does? So um, there will be workshops, research schools, and teacher seminars is something that's not happening at the moment, um, except on a local uh, level or a small level uh, run by Delia North in uh, University or, or in KwaZulu Natal region. Um, but this needs to be grown and, and uh, so it's definitely COE has been doing this uh, for the last 10 years and doing a fantastic job, but we can do more. Um, then there should be formal connections with all the departments of mathematics and education faculty too, so including the Association for Math Mathematics Educators, um, there should be formal collaborations between st departments of statistics and mathematics and industry, uh, post-retirement professorial uh, uh, research fellowships. So uh, currently uh, there's a lot of expertise getting lost when they retire and it would be brilliant if we could retain some of them more. Some universities do, some don't. I know that when I retire it's done, tickets. <laughs> I lose my email address even. Um, support outreach programs into young sc uh, schools, identifying young talents. So, so this is happening at the level of the South African Mathematics Foundation. Um, so short term, um, established positions associated with the National Center of Mathematical Science already there, all right? Permanently funded, um, South African Mathematics Foundation to enhance and centralize the outreach that they have to into schools in terms of teacher development, which they do in partnership with AIMSIC. So AIMS is a schools enrichment program already. Um, so there's a memorandum of understanding and they're working together. But one aspect that I found as, as part-time executive director of SAMF is that the proposal actually was for the National Center to include SAMF and give it a, a permanently funded base because that is a big issue. I have to go and beg on corporate stores to try and pay salaries for, for the staff at SAMF. And it's, I'm not as good as <laughs> in doing that, okay. So teacher outreach and all the promotional aspects regarding careers in mathematics, et cetera, that SAMF already does, that can form part of what the National Institute does. Um, building a national center, including a library, computing facilities, and administrative infrastructure, so that we can debate, because although um, the framework says decentralized centers, um, the one example that we have is not decentralized. It's in the Western Cape at a university. Yes? Uh, is that changing? The perception is that it's decentralized. Okay. So okay. All right. So that does make sense in a certain sense because the center of excellence is at WITS and they also have the support of the WITS infrastructure, but they serve all universities. The National Graduate Academy is at University of Pretoria, and they use their offices, but they also work with all universities across the whole country. So I'm not, uh, it doesn't have to be a new building, okay, but this was what was proposed 15 years ago. And then it should have a program of residential graduate workshops, National Agra Graduate Academy does that, uh, research schools, Center of Excellence does that, and associate teacher residential seminars, the South African Mathematics Foundations and AIMSEC do that. Right. So what entities? Now this is just me, right? This is not any government documents and you can certainly add to this and I'm putting it out there because we need to talk about this. So if we're working towards a national institute, we want to reduce fragmentation. We want to bring together as many bodies as possible. So COE Maths, NGA Maths, the Maths Foundation, the research chairs, and I added this, uh, the Mathematics Indust in Industry Study Group currently works under the Center of Excellence and is funded by them. And it's very, it's, it's mainly, it's, it's originating at 
University of the Witwatersrand through somebody, uh, uh, an academic that's been pushing it very actively. But if you recall what I was saying about the framework, they, uh, government wants us to collaborate with industry, and so we need to grow this. And the seed is there, it's happening. Just figure out how to support and strengthen that. The seed for um, working in the school environment is there. Grow and support it, we have to figure out how to do that. The research chairs are there, get them working together. Um, this is very active and growing and reaching out to early career researchers and um, Louisa has been instrumental in finding funding from other government sources than the National um, uh, the Department of Science and Innovation. It's funding from the Department of Higher Education and Training. Um, and this is currently funded by the Department of Science and Innovation. So we need to really think strategically about how we get all of these funding streams together if we do not get the go-ahead to be upscaled into a national center. So the reason that the um, government represented was not able to speak here, I believe, is because they have not yet reached a decision about the future of the center of excellence. Um, we've heard various things. I know Bruce has been told some things that he is not allowed to say, and I don't know exactly what they are, but um, there, there definitely are opinions in the Department of Science and Innovation. Um, Nathan Sassman works under Sagrin Moodley, and it looks like there definitely is support for possibly upscaling us into a NIRGI. But we can't count on that. We have to think further than that and use the next two years to set ourselves up. And then as soon as we can motivate that, that's how we've set ourselves up. And I think you have, because you have written a self-evaluation document that is currently being reviewed by the National Research Foundation. Um, then hopefully we'll get the next three years and we can keep expanding. Yes. No. So the Department of Higher Education and Training is focused on um, people that are working at universities already. So they, they are funding through the uh, grant that Louisa obtained, early career researchers, uh, people that have full-time work already. So it's not uh, able to cover uh, students that are not working full-time already. So, so there's certain constraints with that funding. Okay. So I'm almost done. I know you've sat a long time. So what issues will it solve? It will facilitate quality research, develop capacity in the graduate student body. This is from the framework, uh, from the review document. This is exactly what we've been hearing, right? Develop mathematical sciences research capacity, develop mathematics teachers professionally, and promote mathematics in school and society. It's the whole pipeline from cradle to grave, right? Um, oh, okay. So just in closing, what I want to talk about is how do we get there? So literally what I did is I adapted the dates in the 2008 review doc report from 2009 onwards to 2025 to 2030. And we can just follow this roadmap. And I'm not going to go into detail in each of these. You can read the document. But a lot of these we've already done. So it's actually, we can almost kick off in 2027's plan because we have seed funding for the next two years, hopefully for the next five years from the Department of Science. And we have directors. We have had many workshops, not just an initial one. We have a steering committee. We have a website. Uh, we have through the Maths Foundation Mathematical Advancement Programs at school level through the National Graduate Academy at uh, university level. We have a location. Um, this has jumped a bit. Uh, we have office staff. So through the COE Maths, NGA and SAMP, let's start working together. Um, and 
then we start building by doing this. So initiate in a, interactive video lectures with equipment available in all universities. So the National Graduate Academy is doing this with online things. Um, and we just need to build on that and hope that we get equipment at all universities so that the students are not dependent on having good internet connectivity. And um, so these, all of this is partly already happening. We just have to show that it's already happening and that we're working together. And then this is debatable whether we want a permanent center to be built or whether we just use what we have. But guys, we are 50% there, I think. And uh, my call is let's walk together as all these entities also aims um, to, to get there. Thank you very much. Bruce has his hand up. Can I? I think it's important that we realize DSI is supporting us. Yes. They are in they are on board. They are incredibly supportive of our initiatives. And that's all you can say. Yes. Okay. And <laughs> Where is the money? <laughs> yes. I have a question slash comment. Mm. Um, now, uh, since we're at, at Ames, as, as it is well known, the, the foundation of Ames begins um, uh, with, uh, with theoretical physics along with mathematical sciences. Mm. And I think uh, for Ames, the, uh, the, they're not separate things. Um, the uh, establishment of, of NETHEX, I think, is based on the idea that we want unification in basic sciences. Mm -hmm. um, and because mathematics plays a huge role in basic sciences, you will find that mathematical sciences is quite widely represented under NETHEX. Mm -hmm. and, and financial mathematics is there, data science is there, and a few, a few others. Um, the framework that y you're proposing um, for our future I'm not proposing seems the to be 2008 review proposed it. I just put it into a current context, okay. Yes, so that framework uh, seems to be um, emphasizing on mathematical science and statistics. And how do you see this in relation to interdisciplinarity across basic sciences altogether? So whether we want to have a kind of something separate that um, is in harmony with the rest of basic sciences or we want to be integrated under uh, the uh, wider scope of basic sciences. Th this question, I think, is relevant in terms of possible future integration of mass under NITHEX mm. because I think NITHEX um, in its framework um, is a realization of an institute for basic sciences mm -hmm. and interdisciplinary research within basic sciences. Mm. Yeah, good question. So in theory, um, for me, first prize would be if, if uh, do you want to answer that? Yeah. I'll give you a chance now. You were putting up your hand. Um, if, so we're concerned about dilution of funds if NITEX gets too large and too huge. If that is, and, and so uh, mathematical sciences and uh, uh, have a very specific need and focus. Um, I think I'm asking about the definition of mathematical sciences because this yeah. term could mean that several different things. Yeah. And the, what, what definition of mathematical sciences do we have in mind it's in the scope of this presentation? It's not all the basic sciences. I'm talking about mathematics and statistics and mathematics e education. Um, as disciplines that serve other basic sciences like biological sciences and theoretical physics and um, but including things like mathematical physics so I'm um, I can't I, I know we have some uh, we've had debates about how you define all of these things um, Neil Turok actually in I, I took a note of it but my cell phone is down there in his opening address I don't know whether you heard it but um, he spoke about theoretical physics being one part of mathematical science. 
Um, and so Th that's exactly what I'm trying to address. Yes. So it, in COMS, I don't think you you see, I don't think COMS had um, a theoretical physics uh, component to it because there no. was a NETHAP, a separate entity exactly. for that. Yeah. 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 So Luisa might want to add to what I said. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are two things that have been presented here. Uh, by it's a wonderful presentation as well as the, the outline. Now, the National Institute for Research, Development, and Innovation, those are creations of a directorate of one department, namely the Department of Science and Innovation. And the focus is on research, which translates to development, innovation, and all of that. And the one that is here, it's, in my view, in, I mean, it, it would relate to Department of Science and Innovation, the Department of Higher Education and Training, because here there was a question about the Department of Higher Education. The Department of Basic Education is about mass education. So, for me, the difference is, the question is whether the mathematical sciences, okay, you and I have had this discussion about what is mathematical sciences, should be staffed into an entity, all of it, can it be stuffed into an entity which responds to the mandate of one directorate? Or should it be structured in such a way that it covers everything from the cradle to the grave? Mm. That's a very important question, mm. but my question was different. My question was about, <laughs> uh, uh, my question was about the, uh, the distant we have in mind, the research groups we have in mind when we talk about mathematical sciences and statistical sciences, mm -hmm. and specifically what role theoretical physics has there. As I said, under Ames, theoretical physics is considered as part of mathematical sciences, mm. but under COMS, I don't think it is. Mm. So this is something maybe to think about in the, in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So we do want to be con in uh, inclusive. And, but but Luisa's summary is actually a very good one. Um, in terms of Where's the money? And uh, obviously we need government funding to at least start all of this, but we could think also beyond, if, if we could get a sponsor, w w what we, uh, I jokingly say you don't have money, so I can use that, the Luis Ononso Mathematical Sciences uh, Institute, or, or you know, like the Simon, there's many examples all over the world. Uh, some of them are government funded, some of them are not. Uh, but there are many examples of centers. Uh, I think of CIRM in Marseille, which has a center where people can get together, and, 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 and that's for mathematical sciences. Uh, there's many examples all over. There also are examples of different kind of entities, which are like the Oberwolfach style centrum, where researchers go on a retreat somewhere and, and work together. That's separate from what I was describing now. I know some universities are working towards creating centers like that, so retreat centers. Um, but we're just talking about something where we can continue what has been started in the center of excellence, where we all work together across all the universities to strengthen mathematical sciences in the entirety and not lose. If government says in two years' time, now it's done, we phase you out, where are we going? Do we just forget what we've achieved in the last 10 years? Or would you, do we have a plan? How are we going to continue it? And that, that's really the message that I'm trying to get across. And that is the message of many of us that we've been working on already since June last night, uh, ach, last year. <laughs> Um, uh, with what you'll hear about later on the Mathematical Sciences Strategic Alliance, which is many entities talking uh, together to try and figure this out. Was there a question? Okay. I'm over time. Hmm? Okay, so, so, so maybe if there's no time, because uh, I'm in the other panel, so perhaps I could talk about it. But I just wanted to ask, in terms of the, um, the one slide you showed, the universities, and then the, it looks like the universities which have 201. In fact, those universities which had less uh, participation in terms of awards, most of them don't really have a maths program at, at all. So maybe that also explains. So I think 
in going forward, maybe part of the, the work that SEOE could also drive is around curricula. Um, so that you know, it's also popular for students. Because what we're finding now, a lot of the students do go into the data science field or something around, um, and not really interested in the basic core maths. So perhaps there's also a question around how we can help those universities in terms of developing these clusters of excellence. They probably don't need to offer the degrees themselves, but how we collaborate with the institutions which maybe have a track record in terms of helping those institutions also develop similar programs in those um, areas which so are you're relevant. Talking, you're talking about undergraduate maths, yes. Yeah, undergraduate yeah. maths, but also, I mean, postgraduate degrees, yes, you can do inter-collaboration, but I mean, the undergraduate curricula is important because if you look at what you listed in that graph, most of those universities below yeah. um, might not have, uh, definitely, I know the universities of technology don't have, uh, they, they do, service engineering and other faculties, but not their own disciplines. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. People are desperate for tea, but I'm happy to talk to them. Thank you very much for the presentation. I'm from the DSI, and I've been quietly listening so I can <laughs> give feedback when I get back to the department. I, I think the model looks great, but because of the constraints that we are facing, we really need to look at how we bring in industry. I'm glad to see that you have the MISG uh, as an element, but we need to really strengthen applications in industrial level. I would also like, because our mandate now from the Decade Our Plan, which is nicely articulated, also strongly speaks about a Pan-African agenda. So as we discuss with Sagren, please consider those facts more deliberately. Thanks. Thank you very much, Kirsten, for that inspiring um, presentation. I know I'm standing between you and tea time, so I'm just going to take two minutes more of your time. I just want to um, briefly announce that the COE will be um, compiling, if I can put it that way, an anniversary collection in Africa Mathematica um, with the theme Advancements in Mathematics and Statistics celebrating the COE Mass 10-year anniversary. So we're calling on all um, researchers in the mathematical sciences um, to submit um, a, an article for publication in this collection. Um, we will send out more information on this, but basically we are, cov we are inviting any researcher that has an aff affiliation with one of the nodes, um, node partners of the Center of Excellence. Those were listed on the slides presented by Bruce, but they're also available through our um, website, the COE Mass website. So we look forward to lots and lots of um, publications coming through to, to us, to the editors of um, Africa Mathematica. So thank you very much for that. And now it's tea time, so enjoy the tea. We, uh, the tea. we have a very exciting schedule for the remain, remainder of the day, so please come and join us for that. Thank you. Thank you.